Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be looking at the Bauman's capsule, the glomerulus, also known together as the renal corpuscle, as well as the process of ultrafiltration. So stay tuned. Let's dive right into it. So this is the Bauman's capsule, and then we have the glomerulus. So where, before we get into detail, let's look at where this is found, first of all. So this here is found in the nephron. This structure on the right is called the nephron. So this is the part that has been zoomed out here, uh, zoomed in here. And then the nephron, in, in turn, is found in the kidney. So this is the kidney, and this is where the nephron will be located. So this tiny cup-like thing here is the Bowman's capsule. So let's look at the details of the Bowman's capsule. So this bottom part here, this structure that looks like a goblet, is the Bowman's capsule. And then inside here is the glomerulus. Together, they are called the renal corpuscle. Let's look at the other uh, structures here. So this is known as the afferent arteriole. And this is the efferent arterial. Efferent arterial is where the blood comes in to the glomerulus. Glo the glomerulus is actually just a bundle of capillaries, blood capillaries. And then from the glomerulus, the blood goes out into the efferent arterial. This efferent arterial will then go on to the next part of the nephron, which is the proximal convoluted tubule. And here we have odocytes. So the Bowman's capsule is made from several different types of cells. Now, these cells here in the inner part here are podocytes. These are specialized cells. We will get into detail later. And then this part inside here is the endothelium, this layer inside, just under the podocytes. This part is called the endothelium. And then the space inside here is known as the capsular space. The capsular space. So the purpose of this renal corpuscle is for ultrafiltration. Filtration, ultrafiltration occurs through the filtration membrane. And what forms the filtration membrane? The endothelium here, this layer inside here, together with the podocytes. So these two form the filtration membrane. In the lab, filtration membrane is analogous to filter paper. So this is the filtration membrane. The podocytes are cells that have feet, false feet. Okay, so the, the feet of the podocytes will link together like this. They form a cross link and then the space in between is how the uh, solutes are filtered. Solutes and small molecules can be filtered through. Okay, so they pass through the small slits in between. That's the podocytes. And the endothelium here is actually a porous membrane. It has many tiny pores. So together they form the filtration membrane. And they only allow water and solutes to enter, small molecules, to enter the capsular space here. That's the function of the filtration membrane. How is it filtered then? When the blood comes to the glomerulus, now the efferent arterial the, has a large diameter compared to the efferent arterial. So because the, the diameter of the efferent arterial is smaller, the pressure created inside the glomerulus is high. This is called the hydrostatic pressure. There is a high hydrostatic pressure in the glomerulus. This will force the liquid out to the capsular space. So this is what ultrafiltration means. So the filtrate is the fluid that has already passed through the filtration membrane. This is known as the glomerular filtrate. Filtrate is the fluid that has managed to pass through the filtration membrane. Now, glomerular filtrate contains the fluid inside the capsular space will contain small molecules such as water, mineral salts, glucose, amino acid and urea. These are the molecules that will be here after ultrafiltration in the glomerular filtrate. These molecules are small enough to pass through the filtration membrane. Some molecules are too large to pass through the filter, filtration membrane and they are such as red blood cells and plasma proteins. So these are large molecules. They are unable to squeeze through the filtration membrane and so they will be left inside the glomerulus. And when they are left in the glomerulus, what will happen is they will go out 
into the efferent arteriole and then they will go to the proximal convoluted tubules, tubules in the capillary itself. So they will remain in the blood vessel. That's it on ultrafiltration. Next, I will cover reabsorption. So if you've learned something today, please hit the like button and please subscribe to see more videos.